we have come full circle on the rat raccoon debate of a year ago as Jeff McNeil and Francisco Lindor both played huge parts in a game where the Mets won and a rat stormed the field. I'm going to talk about that game on today's show. I'm also going to touch on why Jeff McNeil has become the Mets' most important player this year. And then lastly, a Jacob DeGrom update. A lot to cover on this edition of Locked On Mets. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you uh, amazing Mets fans. You're watching Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on Twitter at FinkelsteinRyan. You can also find some of my writing at JustBaseball.com, where I work as the managing editor. Now, if you're wondering why today's episode's up a little bit late and you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. I was at the Heat game last night. Beautiful to see uh, Philadelphia Sixers fans cry. There wasn't really any in the building, but just on Twitter and in general, uh, great to see Philly fans upset. And I was very happy as a Miami Heat fan, a local South Floridian, uh, to watch that game in person. I'm going to take this off because it looks ridiculous. Um, thank you for the giveaway, Miami Heat. But this is not a, a Heat show, so let's not talk about the Heat blowing out the Sixers. Uh, let's actually discuss the Mets game that I had to catch up on this morning. Uh, because I was unable to watch it last night, which was Carlos Carrasco, Jeff McNeil, Francisco Lindor, a complete team victory as the Mets handled business against the Washington Nationals in a game where the Mets went two for 14 with runners in scoring position, only had eight hits. They found a way because they always find a way this year, and it helps when you're playing a team as bad as the Washington Nationals. But let's not take away some credit from Carlos Carrasco, who continues to be a revelation this year. Who saw it coming? I did. Uh, but Carlos Carrasco, it seems like he's pitching in the seventh inning every single time he takes the ball, able to, to mix his looks up. Uh, he just looks like a pitcher that's in complete command of his stuff. And in this game, goes six and two-thirds, allows seven hits, but just two runs, five strikeouts, no walks. Uh, a big thing about the Mets starting pitching this year is they just aren't giving up free passes, and that's going to help you a bunch or more – um, able to to get around seven hits allowed if you're not giving up any free passes with the walks. He did give up an RBI double in the fourth, but good defense allowed the Mets to gun down a runner at the plate to make that RBI double worth only one run. Brandon Nimmo and Jeff McNeil executing that relay. Carlos Carrasco did give up a home run to Riley Adams in the fifth, but that accounted for the two runs that he gave up. And like I said, just good team defense all around. Francisco Lindor made a diving play. James McCann. Gunning down runners, holding that running game in check. In the seventh inning, uh, Drew Smith entered to get the final out for Carrasco. And he didn't have to do anything because D. Gordon tried to steal second and McCann gunned him down. Uh, and then offensively, the Mets were able to score two runs thanks to Jeff McNeil's RBI double in the sixth. You had Pete Alonso and J.D. Davis both get hits to get on base. Eduardo Escobar drew a walk to load the bases after Starling Marte had struck out. And then you had Jeff McNeil up. He rips a liner at Josh Bell. Could Bell have caught that ball? Absolutely. Uh, It looked like it was 110 miles per hour off the bat. But you look at the actual exit velo from Baseball Savant, 95.8. Gives me a little bit more um, of a feeling that Bell probably could have made that play. At first, I thought, look, that ball was smoked. And it was smoked. um, But still... It goes down as a double, and that's not Jeff McNeil's fault that he ripped a liner right at somebody and really right through somebody. So McNeil did his job, get the big clutch hit of the day. The Mets scored two on that double, then another in that inning on a James McCann sack fly, and later on in the game, they were able to tack on another with a sack fly. But it came down to pitching, defense, and just a team win altogether. Drew Smith entered, uh, as I said, for that one out. Then he got two more outs in the eighth inning. Uh, You had Joely Rodriguez come on to face Juan Soto. He got it out there, and then Edwin Diaz closed the door. This bullpen continues to perform, and Drew Smith has been a huge part of it. 13 and a third scoreless, 
for him at this stage of the season. He's the only pitcher in MLB to have thrown 13 innings without allowing a run at this point. And also, of course, we have to discuss the rat that went on the field today. Um, as I'm about to, to dive into why Jeff McNeil has been the Mets' most important player this season, isn't it great to see, you know, when, when Lindor makes that diving play, who's right next to him, you know, giving him high five, who, who's laughing with him. These two guys that everyone this offseason hypothesized couldn't possibly play together. They could never bury the hatchet. Well, you know what? Winning baseball games cures all. It's just that simple. And I don't think Francisco Lindor is going to continue to hold a grudge on Jeff McNeil when he's playing elite defense next to him at second, when he's hitting 333, and when he has a 400 on base percentage. It's just not going to happen. He's going to forgive him pretty quickly. Winning, as I just said, it, it fixes everything. It fixes absolutely everything. And when you looked at the Mets' prospects this season going in, how are they going to form their team? Jeff McNeil was a piece that was significantly undervalued. And for those out there that felt like it was time to move on from Jeff McNeil to trade him, it just clearly was a, a terrible line of thought because McNeil gives the Mets so much value with his versatility and with his elite bat to ball skills to be able to contend for batting titles. As we've thought throughout his entire career, one bad season should not make you give up on a player. And thank God the Mets didn't because Jeff McNeil has been that good this year. He is leading the Mets right now in F4, and I want to talk about that in just a minute, how he has become the most important player on this Mets team. But before we get to that, with spring in the air, it's time for renewal and growth, personally and professionally. As your small business grows, LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. You can create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then you can add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires first leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. To post your job for free, terms and conditions apply. So now let's discuss how Jeff McNeil has become the most important player of the Mets. And really, at this stage of the season, their most valuable player. He's leading the team with a 1.3 F4. And you look at his WRC plus, and this is before last night's game is accounted for by Fangraphs where he did have a, a big day with that RBI double. He has a 149 WRC plus. Again, that measures hitters based on a league average of 100. So he's been 49% better than your league average hitter. And that is the top mark on the New York Mets. He's hitting 333, a 400 on base percentage, a 465 slung percentage. Now you look at his advanced metrics, and he's not the type of hitter that uh, is following the current mold. He's not launching the ball looking for home runs. He's not hitting the ball hard. In fact, he's in the 12th percentile in hard hit percentage, the 28th percentile in average exit velocity, the 9th percentile in barrel percentage. And you know what? It does not matter at all. And it's not, uh, you know, unsustainable. You look at his BABIP, which is 366 right now, uh, which is batting average on balls put in play. And if you wanted to poke holes in Jeff McNeil, if you were a hater out there, you would say he's not hitting the ball hard. He's just getting lucky. Look at the BABIP. Look at what he's done. There's no way this is sustainable. Yet, if you've watched the guy throughout his career, he's just getting back to the guy he was throughout the minors, the guy that got promoted, the, the guy that burst onto the scene as a rookie, and the guy that was an all-star in the first half of 2019 playing this game. In the second half of 2019, he went to the home run ball because it was a juiced baseball. But if you look at the player that he has been throughout his career, this is exactly what you want to see from Jeff McNeil. It's finding the holes. It's laying down a drag bunt here and there. It's in, in a clutch spot, dumping one into the outfield to score a run. This guy is just a professional hitter that knows the strike zone better than anyone, is able to stay in counts by fouling pitches off, and he just doesn't try to do too much. And it is just a revelation to see him back playing like this 
because he can be an all-star for this Mets team. He can be a, a key cog in everything they're doing. And really, he is, in my opinion, the most indispensable player on this roster right now. I know Pete Alonso is an incredible force offensively. Francisco Lindor is a superstar shortstop. I, I get that those two guys in particular jump out as players you can't lose. And if you wanted to discuss a Brennan Nimmo who's had a good start to the season, a Starling Marte, I, I hear arguments for all of these guys. But what Jeff McNeil does is he unlocks so many different combinations for this Mets team because he can play strong defense wherever you put him, absolutely anywhere. Even third base, which I know Mets fans will say, thank God he's not over there anymore because he was so bad. But that was the first week of a 2020 season that you remember. But if you look at his defensive metrics, even at third base, the guy is six defensive run saves for his career, three outs above average. And this year at second base, it's been worth three outs above average. He's been getting less playing time than some of the other second basemen that are ranked ahead of him. He's still in the top five when it comes to outs above average among second basemen, but he's splitting time and playing left field. 17 games played at second base, 15 starts, 11 games played in left field, 92nd percentile overall in outs above average. I hate to to continue to, to beat a dead horse here, but we did spend so much time this offseason talking about Chris Bryant, talking about this idea of maybe trading a Jeff McNeil to make room for a Chris Bryant. And now you're seeing what I was talking about. Jeff McNeil defensively gives you so much. And at second base in particular, he's playing like a gold glover right now. He, he's a guy that's going to make the tough plays, the routine plays, and the versatility, as I said, can un unlock so much for this Mets team because we're seeing Louis Guillaume get a lot of run. So if you want to go Guillaume at second, you can slide McNeil into left to give Canna a blow, Nemo a blow, Marte a blow. Just that ability to have someone who does exactly what Billy Epler said this offseason he loves, play in the dirt and in the grass and do both very well, that is something that no one else on this roster possesses. Dom Smith is the closest thing just because he technically has both in his bag. He can go out and play left. He can play first base. But we know that in left field, Dom is not a positive contributor. We see Starling Marte joking around, taking some ground balls at third base before the game yesterday. That's fun and cute, but we know he's never going to actually get into a game and play the infield. Even a uh, Louis Guillaume, who brings great defensive versatility to this team as the backup shortstop that can play really good defense at third and second. He's not going out into the outfield. This is the one guy on the Mets that does that. And when you have to get through the grind of a season, if you know a Brandon Nimmo goes down, this is where McNeil is going to continue to be just the, the most important piece of this team because you won't skip a beat. You can slide him out into left field. You could eventually look at a Brett Beatty as an option this season or a Mark Vientos, and that might add another infielder into the mix which could push McNeil out into left field if you need to. So it's just been great to see this guy uh, really come back against the haters. There were so many people who thought he was done after one bad season, and what you're seeing is that this guy is a great baseball player. It's just that simple. It, 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 you don't even have to talk about advanced metrics or stats or whatever it is. To me, when I watch Jeff McNeil, it pops off the screen. The guy's just good. He's just good. He's good defensively. He's good offensively. Um, he gives you a chance, and he's a winning player. I really think he's a winning player, and he's a huge part of what has the Mets off to such a fast start this season. They've done all of this, though, without Jacob deGrom. I want to give you an injury update on him in just a minute. We'll also talk about a pitcher the Mets just acquired. Uh, yesterday. Before we get to that, summer is coming. And with summer, you're going to need some food on the go. And Built Bars are the perfect snack to take with you on family vacations. Throw them in your bags, in your kids' backpacks. Make sure that everyone has a bar so you are fueled for your summer adventures. And the best part about Built Bars, they're healthy and delicious. So you don't have to sacrifice food for health, uh, or, you know, delicious food for health, I should say. With Built Bar, you can have both. There's the incredible puffs, which are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They are absolutely delicious. Come covered in 100% real chocolate with great flavors like the banana cream pie and even the churro. Who doesn't want to eat a protein bar that tastes like a churro and only comes 
with 140 calories. You can sign me up for that. And if that's not enough flavor for you, you can try the mix box where you get 12 different flavors of the bars and the puffs. You can choose what you like and see what you want to get moving forward. Go to built.com to get all your favorites and use the promo code lock 15 to get 15% off your order. Again, that's promo code lock 15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, Mets fans, great news. Jacob DeGrom is back to throwing baseballs. Now it's light tossing at 60 feet. It's not like his return is imminent just yet. He was moved to the 60 day IL, which might have you concerned, but let's be very clear about that. He was moved to make room for the most recent pickup off of waivers, Lock St. John. If there's ever been a Mets legend, Rob Pearsall, that is the guy right there. Uh, you should check out Mets Legends, by the way. A great uh, site and a great account to follow on Twitter for all of your legendary Mets content, making you remember the Lock St. John's of the past, as well as uh, the current when it comes to this Mets team. Uh, and just to touch on St. John real quick, a 29-year-old left-handed reliever, um, you know, 5-4 OERA in 2019 with the Rangers. Not a lot of experience, side-arming, a soft tosser. We'll see if he becomes anything. I, I wouldn't really make too much of that. But getting back to Jacob DeGrom, you know, he was moved to the sixth day IL to make room for St. John, um, but that does not really affect his return at all. That makes him eligible to get back on June 6th, and that is even early at this point. I don't imagine still, even though everything has been positive, I still could see the Mets waiting until after the All-Star break on DeGrom. I really could. Um, maybe we see him a little bit before that in the beginning of July, but right now it's just light tossing, but everything is going well. He still needs to get more imaging done um, to look at that stress reaction in his right scapula. But the last time they looked at it, it was healing up very nicely. He was doing what they were calling strengthening and loading on that shoulder. Uh, so we'll see now what happens when he gets the testing next week. If those next, uh, MRIs come back clean. We could see him ramped up a little bit, but again, expect the Mets to be extraordinarily cautious with Jacob DeGrom. I would not be surprised at all if they just went an inning at a time with his rehab starts. Start him in Port St. Lucie, you know, give him an inning the first time out, five days later, give him two innings, give him three innings, and then maybe he starts to get ramped up to four, five, six innings um, up in you know the Northeast if they put him in double A AA or triple A to try to get him a little bit more ready for the season. But uh, you know DeGrom's going to push to get back as soon as possible. But when you have uh, you know Carlos Carrasco, like we just saw, delivering a, a great performance, Tyler McGill has been awesome this year, Chris Bassett and Scherzer, just great anchors atop the rotation, and even getting what they have at times from a Taiwan Walker or a David Peterson, there's no reason to push Jacob DeGrom. The bottom line with this team is you want Jacob DeGrom ready in October. And if anything, this is – Sort of a good thing for the Mets, not that you want to see DeGrom out, but the fact that they've managed so well without him, it allows you to be really patient and make sure you do this right. And when you get to October, he should be very, very fresh. And that's going to be huge for this Mets team. Uh, you know, we, we've been saying it forever. I know on this podcast in particular since 2019, when I started the show, uh, one of my common phrases is, is that it's the biggest sin in baseball that Jacob DeGrom hasn't pitched in October since 2015. I think that will be rectified this year. Hopefully the health, it, it won't preclude him from doing that. Um, but this is a good first step to know that he's throwing a little bit um, and, and we'll see what happens when he gets those next round of MRIs. Now this is a series the Mets should absolutely sweep. I talked about it on yesterday's show when I had Josh Neighbors on, uh, on the crossover this is just laid up for the Mets where you're, you're facing some terrible pitching. You got Tyler McGill set to go. Let's see the Mets win a series tonight and go for the sweep on Thursday. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, at Finkelstein Ryan. Follow the show, at Locked On Mets. Thank you for making Locked On Mets your first listen every day. Now for your second listen, check out Locked On MLB, hosted by Paul Francis Sullivan, but we call him Sully. Locked On MLB is where you want to go. To stay up to date on everything going on in Major League Baseball, you can follow Locked on MLB wherever you get podcasts.